Albuquerque City, you have any questions? Uh, yeah, actually, we do. We have a question for the West. It's fairly quiet, uh, generally high pressure, although there's a low pressure system in uh, northern New Mexico. We have choke points out of 2130. The 32 knots by 17Z. Somewhere south and east of the line for Boston, Chicago, 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 Chicago. San Francisco, they're expecting clear skies, northeasterly winds, gusts to low 20. And if the winds stay low in New York, we don't expect any issues in New York. This is the National Airspace System. We call it the NAS. And this is a giant screen computer depiction of what the NAS over the continental United States looks like on a typical afternoon. Each one of those tiny icons represents a real airplane. There are probably 6,000 airplanes up there right now, carrying tens of thousands of passengers to their destinations. Guiding these flights across America are thousands of air traffic controllers directing arrivals and departures, climbs and descents, and in route separations. And coordinating this incredible air traffic flow happens here, inside a well-protected, state-of-the-art command center near Washington, D.C. It is here that a never-ending vigil is going on right now, for this is where the FAA coordinates more than 50,000 air operations every day, including airliners, cargo carriers, business jets, military planes, and general aviation flights. In all, 70% of the world's daily air operations right there in the sky above you. The FAA's System Command Center works tirelessly to maintain what it calls throughput or flow in the NAS, which is made up of hundreds of incredibly busy air corridors that crisscross America's skies. Before the command center existed, the most airlines could do was react to problems as they arose, resorting to such measures as in-flight holding, often in dangerous weather. Today, the FAA collaborates with representatives from airlines, special interest groups, air traffic control centers, and others to avoid delays and congestion as much as possible while keeping operations safe. One of our roles at the command center is to lend predictability to the system. And by getting information from our members, by understanding where they're planning on being when, we're able to give the command center more predictability to better pinpoint where is our traffic going to be at what times so they can do better strategical planning six or eight hours in advance instead of maybe one hour before the event is going to occur. The Air Transport Association has 23 associate members, some of them air carrier as in passenger, some air carrier as in cargo carriers. And both of them come to the table with uh, different agendas as far as their daily operation is concerned. There are times where there are individual items or single flight items that need to be addressed so that their particular problem is brought forward and it can be taken care of. The command center always retains the final say on any flow or throughput issue, but every involved party is given the opportunity to voice a position, to be heard, and to be considered. The system command center has brought a whole new dimension to the coordination of air commerce. So what's the biggest single challenge to throughput and flow? It's the unpredictability of storms and other weather delays. By and large, weather has the largest impact on aircraft in the system. Severe weather is a little harder to pinpoint than the other weather. You can see when the low ceilings and the visibility at an airport is such that it makes it dangerous to depart or to land. Severe weather may be impacting a portion of your route of flight that you know nothing about because it's 400, 500 miles away. But to safely and efficiently route around those flights, we will try to depart them from the ground with a route that will keep them clear and allow for the other volume that's also trying to clear that weather. Obviously, the number one responsibility is to always keep the system safe. As part of that commitment, the FAA maintains thousands of backup components for its airport lighting, navigation, and radio equipment with a manager on site at the center to coordinate offline repairs. Experts are also on hand to bring a backup system or backup power online as quickly as possible. 
most of the systems we have are 99% reliable, and it varies from from system to system on which ones are more reliable, but you will find a lot of redundancy in the systems that we have in the NAS. The National Airspace System is organic. It is a giant made up of thousands of women and men and their equipment both in the air and on the ground. The command center's scope and its brain trust has become a model for the rest of the world. It also looks to the future prospects of space-based guidance and control systems. That is where the focus is, to get away from land-based navigation uh, so you can be more flexible and provide a better system for the flying public. We're steering in that direction because we believe without a doubt that that will accommodate the, uh, some of the future growth. With increasing demands on airspace and with more and more people taking to the skies, maintaining a safe flow of air traffic will always be the command center's primary agenda. Since the FAA's Air Traffic Control System Command Center came online in the mid-1990s, America's skies have been better coordinated and more efficiently run than ever before.